start. Allow while using app. Access your motion and fitness activities. Notifications. Just give me everything. Current mode. Free ski. Start skiing. Sick. All right. Good? Good. Hey skiers, I'm Jeff from SkiEssentials.com. I'm Bob, how's it going? Bob and I are both skiing on the brand new 2024 Rosignol Forza 70. Really fun. Yep, and I love what they're doing with the numbers for this year. Yeah, so 70 actually refers to degrees of edge angle, which is definitely a unique way of naming a ski. Right. Um, and in light of that, Bob and I set up our carve systems this morning for the first time ever to see if we could achieve the 70 degree edge angle. That they're claiming that these skis will create. I think we got it. I don't know. I mean, beautiful packed powder. No reason not to get it. I'm really looking forward to referring to the data, seeing what we did. Yeah, I wonder how skewed it'll be, but nothing wrong with these skis on this stuff, huh? No, these skis are incredible. Um, so we're just wrapping up our morning here at Stowe. We'll meet you back in the studio. We're going to talk mostly about this ski, but we will chat about the entire Forza line briefly. So, yeah, real fun. Yep, totally. So, conditions appropriate. Totally, totally conditions appropriate. We kind of nailed it today. We've had quite a bit of snow here recently, but today is just a phenomenal groomer day. Yep. So we're going to finish up our morning here. We'll meet you back in the studio and chat more about these skis. Hey skiers, here we are back in the studio, uh, and this has been a lot of fun. I know I say that every time, but there was something special about this one. Really fun new collection of skis here from Rosignol. This Forza 70 that we're kind of focusing on today is awesome. It was fun playing around with the carve system. Yep. I think we both really enjoyed that. You did a race run yep, on them I, today. I raced on, I raced on these today. A lot of things have yeah. happened. Yep. Um, so. Here we are, this is the new Rosignol Forza line. We have three skis up here. I guess there's like more like five skis that encompass the entire line. Yeah. Would you agree with that? Yes, I would. So we've got 70 here. This is the production graphic for the 70. This is the 60. That's the 50 down there next to Bob. And then this gray ski was just, <clears throat> excuse me, a kind of prototype graphic for the 70 or, or like a test graphic. Yeah. Um, and best way to think about these skis is that they are falling right in between hero skis, <clears throat> whether we're talking hero elite or another part of the hero section of skis. Mm -hmm. And then on the wider side, that would be experience. So you can kind of go make a step from this Forza 70 to say experience 82 Ti. Yeah. And then the other kind of, I guess the overall theme of these skis, and it's really fun um, I love that manufacturers are kind of taking this this direction is these are focusing on carving but in more of a like fun fun way yeah like they want to these skis are designed to put a smile on your face and make you feel good when you're carving not to create the fastest race time um, yeah I think that, and that's like a fun way to think about it. I agree 100%. And whatever they set out to do, it worked. Oh, like, 100%. We've had an absolute there's blast. so much on fun. These. Yeah. And I think it's cool just as an industry in general that there's this resurgence, this refocusing on carving. Right. And it's funny because it like lines up perfectly with me as a skier. Right. 
like my knee hurts if I ski park every day now and I like kind of felt like I needed something else and like just perfect timing we get all these sweet carving skis. And how many times do we talk about it like especially here in Vermont where this mid to upper 70s range is really uh, ideal for 85 90 percent of the days. Right. You know it's like there aren't too many really deep days around here that this wouldn't be a reasonable ski. Totally. Yeah. So really cool, really cool concept. So we'll get into the details here. Um, before we do, the other two skis that we didn't mention when we did that kind of run through of what's on the wall here, there is a, a Forza 70 Master. Yep. And basically what you're getting there is you're getting an upgraded wood cord it's moving to ash, and then you're also getting more of like a race plate. Right. You don't get the connect system. You get a race Correct. plate. And then the idea is you put like a the rocker race, Correct. whatever, 15 or whatever on it. Right. So making a more of a race like More like setup. a hero athlete. Setup. Correct. Yep. Um, and then the other ski kind of on the other end of the spectrum is the Forza 20, which is going to be more of kind of a system affordable package style ski. Yep. And for price, we're looking at $9.99 here, drop down to $8.99 here. I really fought hard for a price sheet and didn't get it before we started filming here, but educated guess is that 50 is going to come in at 7.99. Yeah, that seems about right. And if I'm wrong, <laughs> no we'll, quotes. We'll let you know. <laughs> it's not an official price quote. Correct. So, Bob, you got that prototype 70 over here. Um, why don't we focus on this one, and then we'll we'll kind of touch on some differences between 60 and 50. Yep. But do you want to give us a rundown of what's going on inside these things? Because there's a lot. There is a lot, and it's really nice because that continues through the line, so you're not just getting a wor way worse ski as you go down in the line. You know, it's right. still a lot of that technology filters in. Uh, but like you were, like you said, that master. Uh, has an ash wood core. The rest of these have a poplar wood core. So a little bit lighter, a little bit more poppy, you know, definitely more of that race feel in the ash of the master version. Yep. Um, <clears throat> but this 70 here has a poplar wood core. It has two sheets of metal, uh, bottom layer is a full layer, and then the top layer is their V titanal laminate, which it's we've talked about with, yeah, we've talked about it with like Sender 106 Ti. Yep. So they're grooving this upper laminate, and what that does is it puts the metal in a 3D format. And anytime we're putting these materials in a non-two-dimensional shape, you're really kind of accentuating, uh, you know, the stiffness, the energy, and the feedback that you're getting. So by grooving this upper upper laminate, we're really seeing a big boost in in that energy. Yeah, it's really cool. I love uh, how they do that. Yeah, totally. And, and they, it's, it's just cool to see like ski construction across the board getting more three-dimensional like yep. you alluded to. And then uh, adding to that, they also still use line control technology in here. So, you know, you get the groove and you get the line. Yep. So it really adds to the smoothness and that kind of overall stability of this ski. And you can really feel it in terms of performance. Um, but yeah, line control, we got that V-shaped upper laminate. And then the really cool th thing is how that uh, upper laminate is part of their reinforced tip technology. So what they're doing is they're taking that upper laminate and maybe I'd say about here or I so. That's, a, that's kinda a smart guess. Hard to say. Yep. Uh, they basically like hook it into the core. Yep. Um, so they're really making a more cohesive feel uh, from the very tip down through the forebody of the ski. Uh, so by connecting those materials like mechanically, yep. as opposed to just sandwiching them, yep, I think totally. that you're getting uh, that really nice power steering turn that uh, that I s certainly felt out of these skis. Yep. I agree. Um, and then they get a carbon alloy matrix as well. So carbon and basalt fibers are woven through that fiberglass laminate. Uh, just a ton of energy and snap out of this thing. So a lot of technology going on here. Uh, and most of that filters into the other models as well. So the 60 there that uh, is on Jeff's side uh, ha features the same construction but a different shape, which we can talk about in a second. Uh, and then the 50 drops the metal and you just has the carbon al alloy matrix. Yep. So some similarities, some differences, but overall uh, dealing with that high-end construction with a lot of technology. Yep. And then uh, moving on to shape, I think shape is super interesting. You know, I think the 
the first thing you notice about these skis is how wide the tip is. Yep. You know, it made me think of when when manufacturers first started making shaped skis and you'd right. look at it and be like, that's crazy. Right. And like the first time that we did look at this, it does, it is, it's certainly eye catching. Right. Um, so yeah, extreme extended side cut, which is kind of the whole point. Um, these skis, they don't ski short, which I think is really cool. Like they allow for that super awesome carving feel, but yep. they don't ski short. Um, same, same story in the tail, basically just full extended side cut there. A little bit of a, Barely tapering, tapering in, but yeah, they saved that really. really count it. No, they saved the really squared off ones for the, for the heroes. The hero, yeah, yeah, exactly. Which I think is, you know, if you're gonna point out a difference, yep, there's a slight difference there. Um, Rosignol says five percent tip rocker, which I think is accurate. I would say more like three. Sure, whatever. <laughs> but there's a little bit of tip rocker yep. right here. There is, you know, when, especially if you decamber it. You're seeing it yep. rise off the snow a little bit there. And then this 70, um, we get a 14 meter turn radius and dimensions of 135, 78, and 111. Yeah. So you can just see how big that tip is compared to kind of the rest of the ski. Right. It definitely helps in performance. You know, the thing just kind of rips you into a turn. Um, and then why don't we take a moment to talk about this 60 here, Bob? Um, like you said, very similar construction in the ski. We just get kind of a, a smoothed out tip shape here. So just a yeah. little bit more taper. And, and we did get to ski this. Yeah, it's a narrower tip shape. So it's narrower throughout, yep. um, but more obviously in the tip. Yeah, so and here then, we're 130, 75, 112. So the tail is even a little bit wider. Yep. So it actually has more of that kind of midpoint rounder side cut to it. Um, but yeah, it's easier to get into the turn, like just a little bit more uh, a little bit more natural feeling. Yeah. You know, this one feels more like a race car when you're putting it in, when yes. you're putting it on edge. This doesn't have quite that same no. power this is like a, responsiveness. No, it's like a well-designed sedan. You know, definitely not High-end sedan. High-end sedan. We might even be talking like Audi S4 here. Right. But here we're talking like uh, R8. Right. Audi R8. Yeah. To stick within the Audi <laughs> family. I don't know why I chose Audi. <laughs> But it's not, you know, it's not that big of a difference, and you really, you really do feel the difference is more like in the middle of the ski. This thing just wants to make a little bit rounder turns. Yeah, that's what I found too. Um, which is great. You know, it's it's certainly not a huge step down, especially since they share constructions. I, yeah, I agree. So it's just a little bit different in the initiation phase, uh, and then rounder through the mid body, and a little bit more friendly in the tail. Yeah, yeah, so, but just more forgiving. Yeah, they're not as like. Not that these are harsh, but they're less harsh. Yeah, I mean, it's just, this is a more aggressive ski. Yeah, and that's, exactly. That's what the, the numbers are indicating, too. Right. Like, this is making a less aggressive turn. Right. And that's the whole point, but still has that nice high-end feel and flex to it. I mean, I even skied this 171. Did was, just fine. Yep. Did just fine. It was yep. great. Yep. But, yeah, really fun ski. Um, so... I think we can move on to performance of this 70 unless there's something that you feel like we missed, Bob. No, not particularly. I think we can talk about how this thing goes. It's awesome. So I brought a prop. Oh, nice. And the prop <laughs> is just this piece of paper. Um, sometimes I don't really like manufacturer descriptions of their own skis. It's yeah. like they spend all this time like designing amazing skis and then somebody's like, oh, can somebody write a paragraph about this? And right. it's just like, what is that? And a lot of it usually gets lost in translation, too, because totally. a lot of these are are not started in English. Totally. But um, this is a good but, one. But, yeah, I think Rosignol did a fantastic job. Yeah. There's the whole like whole thing here. Um, I think you could probably find the whole thing on Rosignol's website. But this is the part that really stood out to me. It's the perfect marriage of power and control, making carving into a whole new experience. Success isn't measured in microseconds between the start gate and finish, but in the size of your grin as you access a world of speed and commitment, usually reserved for the world's fastest. I mean, that's pretty good. Is, Is that, it? do you think that's how you felt skiing these things? What was that last part? Do you felt like you were accessing a world of speed and commitment, usually reserved for the world's fastest skiers? No, I still don't like to put myself in that category. Fair enough. But, but I think the concept, the concept is, is correct. Good. 
there wasn't a single time that I got to the bottom on these and said, eh, you know, Absolutely it was 100% it was positive yeah. each and every time. And I think like what I, my big takeaway after reading that and thinking about my experience on them yep. is it does feel like it lets me ski closer to how Ted Ligeti skis than like anything else I've yep. ever been on. Or maybe Ted's not the best example, but any high end GS racer right. who skis on Rosignol, I don't know. I don't my know. knowledge of ski racers <laughs> isn't as good as it should be. Um, but that's really how I felt on them. The edge angle concept totally works. Yep. Like, they are so easy to get up on a high edge angle. And as you know, as somebody who skis with me a lot, I love generating high edge angles. Yep. It's like really fun for me to kind of push myself and see how, how steep I can get my skis, how close I can get my body to the snow. Yep. It's really, really rewarding. And we had those carve systems with us and I am proud to say that the Forza 70 can easily hit a 70 degree edge angle. I maxed out at 84. Yeah, I got 78 today. Yeah, and so it's it's just cool to yep. see it supported in the data. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's not like it took a lot to get there too. Right. That's the thing that I kept coming back to is like, they're really easy to ski. Yep. For such a high end ski, something that performs so well and is so rewarding, it is not hard to get there right. at all. Where if you put me on like a hero athlete GS, like maybe I could achieve the same style turn, but it takes so much more power yeah. and input and strength. And it's like, at least for me, just downright kind of scary. Right. Where there is, I was never, I never felt that same feeling on these. And like maybe I didn't push it super hard but you don't need to. Right. So that was my big takeaway skiing. Um, loved it. Yeah. Bob, your thoughts? Uh, we got on these on a number of, I would say, softer days. Uh, you know, we never really had that bulletproof day on these. Not like bolt, yeah. And you know, that's kind of what I meant from firm like, underneath. I didn't need to push it too hard. Yeah. Like didn't need to go find that boiler plate yeah. to bend the ski, which I thought was cool. But I was, as, as much as I was impressed with that grooming performance, you know, we had some really nice packed powder to turn these things on. Yep. Uh, you know, today there was, you know, three, four inches of nice snow yep. that you could find. Uh, the tip's pretty floaty. You it know, is. It's really, inter yeah, it's interesting. We were 78 so, underfoot so with a pretty floaty tip. It's yeah. a nice lighter weight ski. Uh, you know, Rosie's catalog was putting it at like 1,900 grams without the plate or anything like that. Right. So like with two sheets of metal, that's pretty light. Um, and, that, and so that weight combined with that tip shape, the fact that it does have like a reasonable flex. Yes, that, we, and I think that's important. <clears throat> we haven't really flexed it yet. I kind of yeah. played around with the tip earlier, but yeah, it's not like, it doesn't feel, I mean, it's a stiff ski. Yeah. It's not like a soft flexing ski, but there's like, that's a really nice round flex pattern. And it works well in softer snow. It's able to like articulate and go with the and kind of go with the flow. Yeah. Which I really enjoyed. Um, skied them in the bumps. Like I thought this thing was an awesome bump ski. I found that as long as you found soft bumps. Yeah. It did just fine. I like I had a run down it down like steep nosedive switchbacks yeah. and they were pretty firm and it just like didn't. It just didn't love interacting with a really firm bump, which makes sense because this tip is so wide. Right. It's going to react. Yeah, it's going to, more of the ski is going to get deflected by that hard snow. Correct, right. And you're going to kind of lose sensation in that, in that front. Exactly. Um, but I did notice that, you know, the right, this must have been my right ski and this must have been my left yeah, ski. Yeah, because you're hitting a little bit. Yeah, definitely hitting the tips. You know, that's kind of just my style of having my feet closer together. So. And not a concern because they put a tip protector yeah. on the production model. So it seems that somebody at Rosignol did the same <laughs> exact thing as you. But, I, you know, between that, you know, I skied Freddy Shoot like under the line on this today yep. and fresh snow and then another mogul trail on the way to the top of the race course. And it was just a dream come true. So. Yeah, as much as I really enjoyed it on the groomers and the race course, I found a lot to like off off the groomers, Sweet. off the beaten path. It's at least, I think the way that I react to that response is it's at least nice knowing that you're not stuck on trail. Right. 
Like, I still think the way that they carve is the highlight here. Right. Not going to be, like, if someone comes to us and they're like, I'm looking for a great bump ski, I'm not going to be like, four's a 70. Right. But it is nice to know that they're not so demanding or so stiff or there's so much of a carving ski that you lose all off-piece ability. No, and, like, when we talk about kind of a more of a, that European model of, they would even see this as more of a wide ski. Totally, and, yeah. And, you know, it's hard to kind of convince... I think even people around here in Vermont that yeah. there's a lot of use for something in that mid to upper 70s range for most of the days. Yeah. Um, and this is as, as good of an example as we can find. And you look darn good carving on it. Yeah, it feels great. I mean, there's nothing wrong with how this thing initiates, completes a turn, you know, grips throughout. Pretty easy. 26 something in today's ski bum race. I think that was your oh, fastest yeah. ever ski bum time. It's not good enough. It's <laughs> pretty darn good. Yeah. But, you know, you could kind of feel, and like this is the 173. I prefer the 173 yeah. to the 181, which is pretty weird. To well, it makes sense, kind of. Yeah. That's like the purpose of this ski is not to just go straight as fast yeah. as you can, it's to make those like really rewarding dynamic turns. And I think it does that just extremely, extremely well. Yeah, there were a few times in today's race where I found myself not turning and going straight and yeah. thinking, if I start turning now, I'll turn before the gate. Right, <laughs> you know, right. It was definitely a, a wider setup than this 14 meter radius was, you know, is more in, in tune with, but. Yeah, definitely. Uh, no, it was great, great nonetheless. And I did experiment with those higher speeds, like kind of taking straighter lines, free skiing. Yep. And does no, fine. Does fine. Yeah. It doesn't like, it doesn't wander or waver a whole lot. It's pretty stable. Yeah. You know, it's definitely not the same as like your K2 TI2 that. Drastically that different. Is yeah. A straight line shooter. But that thing, that's like one of those skis that it takes so much work to get it to yeah. bend and like make a dynamic, re rewarding turn. Yeah. But no, I think, yeah, the softer snow performance and then the fact that I like that 173 were my, the two biggest surprises I had sure. for this thing. Yeah. But awesome. No, I think things pretty darn sweet. Um, yeah. I think a lot of people are really going to like them. Yep. I like, I like that Rosignol achieved this, um, like I was kind of saying at the beginning, without sacrificing, like, longitudinal stability. Because I think about like some other skis on the market that are like at least the marketing message behind them is similar. Mm -hmm. The skis themselves aren't as aren't necessarily similar, but like Line Blade or like right. Black Crow's Miras Core, where they're like carving is fun. Like this ski is supposed to make carving right. fun. Like this kind of you know if you read what Rosnell says about it, it feels pretty similar, but it, it's like it's more ski sort right. of. Yep. Like that Miras core has a speed limit where this doesn't feel like it has nearly as much of a right. speed limit. And it, you know, it, they're a lot different, but totally. I thought that was at least interesting to bring up. Yeah, I agree. Anything else you want to talk about, Bob? Bindings, this n nice connect. I think this is a 14. Yeah, I yeah. have no issues with this binding nope. whatsoever. SPX connect 14. I have always great had. Great system. Full trust in the SPX binding. Yep. Um, and I, I suppose maybe this is a good time to bring up that like we haven't skied the master yet right and I'd love to it, it, it will be really interesting to see the comparison between this ski and that master right. with a little stiffer core so we'll try and we'll get we'll our hands get on that. a pair and, and, <clears throat> and definitely put it to the test um, I'd love to ski this 60 more we only did a couple runs on it down at Pico yep but no yeah. perfectly reasonable ski for a huge audience. Yeah. You know, there's just a ton of skiers out there. I think people are really going to like this level. thing. Yeah. yeah. It might be one of those things that requires like a year of like demo before people really yeah. really gravitate to it, but it's just you, you can't deny how much fun they are to ski. Right. Un undeniable. Nope, I agree 100%. Um, and we will end with just availability. We don't have them physically in our warehouse yet. It does look like you can buy a Forza 70 Master, a Forza 70, and a Forza 60 on Rosignol's website. I touched base with our buying team and inventory management team. Does sound like we're gonna have some soon. Sweet. So, can't buy one from us right now. 
You can buy one from Rossignol right now, so if you're dying to have a Forza, go buy it from Rossignol. Yeah. Not going not gonna to get mad. Nope. People can buy skis wherever they want. Yeah, and they'll be happy skiing them. Right. Exactly. Like, yeah, it's so fun. Right. But if you do want to buy them from us, you probably will be able to <laughs> within a couple weeks. So super fun skis. Let us know if you have any questions about them. I think there's a lot to talk about. This feels like one of those videos where we could just keep keep chit-chatting for another right. 20 minutes, but for the sake of not, not making an hour-long video, I suppose we'll end here. Okay. So let us know if you have any questions, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.